I'm going to take another look at perpendicular lines now and we're going to start by reminding ourselves of the formula m1 times m2 equals negative 1 where m1 and m2 are the gradients of two perpendicular lines. I think at this stage it's worth uh, seeing a little proof of that, a simple little proof, um, to give you a feel of where it comes from. So in order to do that we'll have a simple right angle triangle, our old friend the 3, 4, 5 triangle and then I'm going to take that triangle and write it in a different way down there so that this time this is 3 and that's 4 and the right angle is there. So it's the same triangle written uh, in, in two different positions. So where are my perpendicular lines? Well if we mark that angle with a blob and that angle with a cross then when I switch these triangles round then of course the cross angle will be there and the blob angle will be there. Now in my 3, 4, 5 triangle this is a right angle here so the X and the blob must add up to 90 degrees. I've now placed the blob and the X together here which means that if I exaggerate these lines that this line and that line must of course be perpendicular. So if I call that one gradient M1 and this one gradient M2 then let's see what happens. M1, the vertical distance is 3, the horizontal distance is 4. So M1 is 3 over 4. Now look at the M2 line. The M2 line is of course coming down this way so it's a negative gradient. The Y distance down is 4 and the horizontal distance is 3 so M2 is negative 4 over 3. And so M1 times M2 equals 3 quarters times negative 4 over 3 which is negative 1. So again it's not quite a proof I should use letters here instead of numbers but it demonstrates um, where this proof comes from and it's very important and you'll use it quite a lot. So the sort of question that I might be asked to do would be something like this. Find a perpendicular line, I use that symbol for perpendicular much quicker than writing <laughs> perpendicular, so find a perpendicular line through some point to negative 1 to the line 2x minus 3y equals 4. Now unlike the uh, parallel lines uh, lesson where we looked at a very quick method of doing this, this I'm afraid you have to go through one or two steps of rearranging first. So um, although you might be able to find some fancy quick way, it's pretty dangerous um, because of this negative one that floats around. So I'm going to rearrange that formula into the traditional y equals mx plus c version. So I need the 3y on one side and I'll have to move the 4 to the other. So first of all I'll write it as 3y equals 2x take away 4. Now if I divide by 3 I get y equals 2 thirds x minus 4 thirds. So the gradient of the line is 2 thirds and this is my m1 if you like. So m1 is 2 thirds. The rule says 
m1 times m2 is negative 1. So that means then that my perpendicular line, m2, will have a gradient of negative 3 over 2. Okay, and remember the quick way to do that is you invert the fraction and you change its sign. So my perpendicular line, perpendicular line, will be, let's use a different colour just to make it clear on the board. So my perpendicular line is y equals negative 3 over 2x plus c. It has to go through this particular point uh, when x is 2, y is negative 1. So if I substitute those values, then negative 1 has got to equal negative 3 over 2 times 2 plus c, which is negative 3 plus c. Add 3 onto the other side, c equals 3 minus 1, which is 2. So my perpendicular line is y equals minus 3 over 2x plus 2. That's an acceptable answer, um, but we need to watch out for the, the dreaded phrase in the form. Um, we don't like fractions in formula. It's, a, it's not a sort of an absolute rule, but if you can get out of the habit of removing fractions, you'll find that your working becomes so much easier in the long term. So I personally would double that equation, so I would write 2y equals minus 3x plus 4. And I personally don't like to see a negative gradient uh, in a straight line on that side. I prefer it on this side. So I think my version would be 2y plus 3x equals 4. OK, so that's the method then of finding the equation of perpendicular lines. And it does involve having to rearrange your equation uh, into that, into that uh, y equals mx plus c form before you can, you can carry on. Okay, Marie, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x... 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on. Well done. <laughs>